Okay, so we have one guest, Seth. <laughs> I don't know if people know him, Seth Hall. We could just in introduce ourselves quickly. I'm Janet McMahon. Bob Butler. Mark Eckert. Uh, Johnny Cosno. Mike Thayer. Max Johnstone. Okay. So uh, maybe we can go over the revised mission statement and see if people are fine with this. And I'm curious, were you appointed for one or two year terms? Oh, I have no idea. Do you know? I think everybody is for one year. Okay, I thought it was two initially, because my term would be expiring this month if that's the case. Well, then we better make it two. <laughs> <laughs> well, not till March. We have another month. But I, <laughs> but I was <laughs> curious. <laughs> yeah. So we should just check that, though. I okay. think that's what it was. But yeah. I. Yeah. And. and you know, hopefully, I, I would think a one year one year from now, hopefully we will have an environmental covenant if we can have one in place. That would be great. And you know, the health piece could take us far longer. Who knows? But um, at least the pieces we've been addressing should be hopefully done. Can can that be added to the? I, mean, I guess we're getting ahead of the agenda here, but can that be added to the Sylvania mission statement? Let's what you just said, which was the. Um, Environmental covenant. covenant. Can that be explicitly on this? It's really on the number two sort of. Where it would go. Yeah, number two, environmental and, 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 and endeavor to have an environmental covenant in, in place, place by yeah. one, uh, June 1st, 2019. Yeah. I'm not sure who, who would be the parties to that covenant. Would that be something that the town imposes on the owner of the site, or is it an agreement between the owners of the site and the town? It's something that gets written into the deed of the property. It's an okay. attachment to their deed. Okay. And so it's really, we don't really have much say. It's the Department of Environmental Protection says what restrictions will be on the property from this point forward, like not using well water, okay. um, not disturbing soil, it's that type of thing. And we have, you probably haven't gotten it, but we, I sent around earlier a sample that came from the EP that was for a Sylvania site up in Bangor. Okay, yeah. Um, so I, I remember can send reading that. that. Yeah. Did you see it? Yeah, that was in that thumb drive. That, yeah, uh, it, it should have been on the... Thing. Yeah. Oh. So that's an environmental compact that uh, environmental site, covenant, covenant for a place. site that was yeah, in the city of Bangor. Yeah. Um, hi, Ron. Hi. Well, Ron Phillips is joining us. Ron, you take one of these seats. Yeah. Um, You're welcome to join us at the table. Okay. Um, Okay, so we just have, we've begun the meeting. Yeah, okay, good. We don't have, I don't know if there's any spare agendas. That That's all right. Can okay. I just, so Can I just read paragraph two as amended to where we're all on the same page? Okay. I, okay, so it would read, identify laws, regulations, and programs that may apply to the site and its redevelopment into a productive asset. Endeavor to put an environmental covenant in place by June 1, 2019. Okay. Is that... So we don't know yet the, if the property could be leased to the town, if the town would want to actually buy it, or if Leadvance is even willing to allow the town to use it. So those are questions that need to be answered in the next year. I was going to say, just to underscore that, all, and I've, I've read everything that we've got and I've done my own research. Do we have any legal representation of somebody who is an expert in this field to know where the minefields are? what we can and cannot do. Has there ever been any type of legal representation um, that anybody has said, could you take a look at this? Because, uh, I mean, as just to your previous point, the DEP, what if you don't like their report? What if you think it's flawed? What's the rebuttal? Right. And how, that, do you, how do you know if you're arguing the proper points? Well, that's a good question. We've had Joe Guarnaccia, and I think we should try to get him at our next meeting. He comes to probably every other one, is the person who understands the reports. 
and the chemistry, and he's the one who's helping us frame the questions. Right. He, I haven't heard from him about this most recent set, unfortunately. He hasn't been able to respond, and he's not officially on the task force. He just advises out of the right. goodness of his heart. And he comes actually from the industry side, so he knows what industry often is trying to do, which is really, has been really helpful. Mm -hmm. right. um, Who is that? Joe Guarnaccia. He, he not, his brother lives in Waldeboro, um, and he comes, he works on projects. He's a remediation environmental engineer, I guess, I don't know exactly, I think remediation specialist. Um, has several projects in Maine, works with the DEP all the time. So he, he can recognize when we're right. not going far enough. But the piece we have not had is an attorney representing Yes, the and town. I respect Joe. I got a chance to talk with him later, and he's like obviously an intelligent man, yeah. and I read a book that he had a part in. Huh. A civil, a civil affair, which I oh, recommend. Civil all, a civil yeah. action, yes, which yeah. I recommend everybody read. But um, with all due respect, he's not a lawyer, right? No, we don't so, have an attorney. So I, again, and I, as I went over every piece of this, I just said, Johnny, what, you know, what are we missing? You've got to know, and this committee I'm very happy to be part of, and everyone's very zealous, and I know their heart's in it. But that doesn't, there's still legal questions, which is you've got to take away the emotion and say, okay. This is the law. Yeah. I don't trust the DEP or the EPA or whomever. I don't trust the people who did the survey, to be honest with you. I mean, I have a skepticism. Yeah. Why don't we get somebody to do the site? Why don't we get someone to evaluate? Why don't we get our own hydrologist? It's a matter of resources. Good point, Bob. But no, that's the only point. I mean, yeah. Well, it is. It is. But Let me interject I, here. I would dare to say, though, yeah. that the, 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 co the cost of not doing that or not doing due diligence far, would, far outweigh the resources. Well, I don't know. That hasn't been quantified what that cost would okay. be, if there is a cost. Um, it's a I good think at some point you have to suspend your disbelief and trust the process. And wh what I've seen so far, and I'm speaking only for myself, not the other members of the committee, yeah. What I've seen, having interfaced with right. DEP, with EOS, and with Leadvance, all three of the parties, if you want to term it on the other side of the table, right. they are um, as desirous, I think, as we are of getting to the, the facts and acting on them. At the end of the day, we have no jurisdiction over this site, none whatsoever. It's the Department of Environmental Protection that has the jurisdiction, and our DEP reports to them. They're, they're running the show. If we have an issue that we don't feel is right. being adequately addressed by DEP, then our recourses go directly to their boss, I believe in Boston, and raise the issue. But I haven't, I haven't gotten to the point myself right. where I feel we're not being dealt with above board transparently and fairly. If it reaches that point, then maybe okay. yeah. Okay. But attorney time is incredibly expensive. Especially a specialist. And you could run up a bill in a week <laughs> that would swamp us. I mean, right. and, and, and the taxpayers in Waldoboro simply will not accept that. They just won't. Right. They won't Let it. me just turn it around, and I respect what you're saying. Yep. Let me just turn it around and play the devil's advocate. What if we don't do the due diligence and it, there is some chicanery involved and we find that there is really a bad problem there? And all of a sudden that gets out and then property values plummet and then all of a sudden there's a big fence. I was jogging down there as I'd have. There are people still, there's footprints all through that yeah. over those, those uh, I happen to spy it. There are paw prints, there are car tire tracks. So people are still literally going down there. I park there sometimes. You know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just, I, again, and I respect that, Bob. I'm not, but I just feel, what's the right word? I mean, hopefully I'll get convinced. Well, well you I don't. Hope you stay skeptical. <laughs> yeah, I think being, I'm skeptical too that. because right. I think DP will go, I mean, unless we squeak, nothing more will happen. So we've right, been exactly. squeaking. Mm -hmm. and. I feel like we haven't yet l reached the limit of okay, the information right. we I need. And, but once we reach that point, if we feel okay. like there's a roadblock, then I think we go. And for that's it. very fair, and I'm, I'm new to the game. Yeah. So I. So keep researching. And yeah. You know, I, Joe is, I feel like he's our sentinel in terms of whether they're doing enough. And he's been questioning the work they've done. He thinks right. they should do more. 
Um, so we're relying on his judgment there. But I do think we're going to need an attorney when it comes to the environmental covenant piece to review yeah. you know, what we're comfortable right. with, because it's going to determine what we can do with the site. Yep. Um, and they're, and they're going to have to have some expertise in the, the chemistry piece to know whether it's enough. So yeah. but we need to find that person. Maybe he can help us research somebody who ideally. Do you, well, do you, oh, no. Do you, he wouldn't have a staff attorney that would review well, they're the ones who put the restrictions on it, so that's okay. like a, you know, would probably conflict. be a conflict. So I think an independent, you know, Leadvance has an attorney who we've been working with named Ken Gray. You may have seen his name in some of the files, but he's representing them. Right. So I think the town should think about and try and find, maybe we have somebody in the area who would be willing to, to help with that piece well, of it. With well, an expertise in environmental and that type of thing. Because yeah. you want someone who's just who's lasered. done this before. And, and, and hopefully they can, again, guide us to, to look for the right questions and say, you know, and I, again, I'm, I don't think I'm an idiot, but I went through everything and it's very difficult yeah, to it's try to connect those dots, right. particularly when the dots are long distance away and yeah. so anyway. Yeah. That's well, I do, I trust Joe, you know, I feel like he's, he, if he's like, the fox <laughs> guarding the hen house on the <laughs> operations he's working with, so he knows what to look for. If okay. anything, he's the best person we could have because he knows how industry works and, and when they're not doing enough. But you just be vigilant. You know, we'll okay. keep working. And but I, I don't want to just stonewall we're having, us. We're having budget discussions right sure. now for the coming year, and I, I'm going to ask that we include in our legal fee line item an additional amount. Yeah, we should definitely to do that. cover something. If we run into right. the legal issues, yeah. well, also to deal project. with the environmental covenant, that is going to have to have a legal. It will. <coughs> component. And it's not to say that you know you would need someone, you know, for five years at five hundred dollars an hour. Maybe just someone to come in and just give a cursory overall, or just just get us the basics of where we're going. What is the proper questions to forward? This doesn't look right. That type of thing, not not to, you know. <coughs> yeah. You know, hopefully everything will turn out properly. I'm I'm for that. Yeah. But I. We need a volunteer because just to go through the files, it has taken us. Of course. <laughs> months to go through all the background, and you know, to have a lawyer who actually understands this is would be tricky. You know, that's usually not what lawyers do. The chemistry side. So, anyway, but we'll. Yeah, I think what on. we have working for us is the fact that. Companies admitted that it's responsible for the cleanup, even though they haven't admitted any guilt. Mm -hmm. They've admitted they're responsible, and they right. have taken steps for the last 20 plus years to address the issue. I mean, and the town, quite frankly, until the committee was formed, this task force was formed, yes. did absolutely nothing. Right. I, I don't think they felt empowered. And I think there was this connection between former employees still living here. I think yeah. that was a real fear. The people who had pensions, yes, yeah, good. You know, you, you, that, that had to have been a reality at the time. And so we'll learn more as we talk to this list of people we have on our agenda. To, um, but yeah, that that had to have been a factor in people's oh, yeah. reactions. And how they, the people I I see over the years, you know, in the medical field, they love those jobs. They were the best paying jobs, yeah, the benefits. Right, yeah, they they a good job. Yeah. Okay. Um, Are we done with the mission statement? Does everyone feel okay? Oh, yeah. 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 With the agenda, just right to you. So we bring it to the select board and ask them to re approve it. Okay. Okay. I'm tired. Is that the consensus? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the next item on the agenda was uh, that was back and forth we had with Max Luke, who's the project director at DP. With more questions, I asked some more questions, and he gave us some more answers. You know, we keep finding files we haven't seen, which sort of goes to your point. Um, I mean, I printed some of them out, but really, honestly, I feel like we need Joe to interpret some of this. He did explain, you know, why they put the new two new wells where they did. They're putting two new on the, where the Gray House is, the Hops' property, if you know where that is. Right. Um, and I'm guessing it's because when they looked at the stream and found drums there, it might be tied to that, but they didn't explicitly say that. Um, but anyway, he, he explained it, and you know, he said there's not a lot of water being coming out of the wells, and the combination of that with clay might be why the numbers remain high. He didn't think the source was still getting in, which I thought was interesting. That was his explanation as far as He's using words like might and could.
could. Yeah. So <laughs> things that are underground are really hard to see. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, I have those files here, and I think we. What I'm going to recommend to you is that we ask Joe. Our next meeting is with Joe again, and we ask Max to attend and just have our. You know, after we get Joe's reaction to what Max sent, we have our questions. Hopefully. I hope it's near a final round of questions about the remediation work. And the issue is that they've done a fair bit, but we the, the levels of contaminants in the wells keep going up and down. It's not like they're going like this. <coughs> so we think the source is still there. Um, and now they're adding two new wells to the south because they are, this document suggests that they think it's possible or they want to check to make sure it hasn't migrated in that direction, the contaminants. Um, so we, we feel like we still don't have a handle on the extent of contamination, which is really frustrating. And, and yet, they're saying there's no uh, health risk, basically. So, um, and it's meeting the requirements of RECRA, which is the um, program that it's being cleaned up under. I forget what it stands for. I question our, I question the, our ability to say that. I do too. That's the problem. I, I still am not comfortable with them being able to sign off. So I think what we should do is have a meeting with Max here. Ideally not Led Vance and everybody else, yeah, just, just Max, Max and Joe. And and just and in between that time, we can come up with whatever questions we've got right. based on the documents they've sent. Yeah, like can they, I? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, can I just um, explain something uh, about that issue, uh, about no health effect? Yeah. Um, there's the concept of the most exposed individual. Right. And um, a typical most exposed individual would be if somebody had a water belt well in that area and they were drinking these halogenated, these chlorinated hydrocarbons. Um, they can probably make a pretty good case that there is um, very low exposure level to the public from that site right now because um, there is a pump and treat system. There's no vapor coming up from the soil, and uh, we, we could actually go out there with a little H2 analyzer and determine that there's nothing coming up out of the soil. Um, so the most exposed individual is not getting impacted by these um, by these contaminants because there is a treatment plant in place. They have a soil vapor extraction system and they have a pump and treat system in now. So it's not coming up out of the soil. You can walk on the site. You're not drinking the water. So a most exposed individual on that site is not being exposed to anything uh -huh. uh, significant. Um, uh, just, and again, we, our discussion about there's sure. no such thing as zero right. <laughs> right. in right. any environmental right. investigation. Of course. Yeah. But I think they can make that statement. Okay. Yeah. And that's what we need to know. I mean, John Fancy, who's in the water district here in town, felt like they were meeting their obligations. You know, he's seen other sites like this, and you know, this is what they do. This is how our laws work. We can't really push beyond. Um, so anyway, if we have Joe and Max here, we can just kind of get this on, get clear on it. Because I'd like to move past this point if we can. Even if we understand that, w you know, there's, the plume could be in a different place, we could still yeah. potentially use part of the site, you know, that kind of thing. I, I, again, I just want to inject. I go, I go back, I mean, the way my, mind works is I try to keep it simple. In the Marine Corps, there was a saying, the KISS principle, keep it simple, stupid. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to keep it as simple as I can. Mm -hmm. And I had three questions here. Do we, does anybody know exactly in that area, and I saw those cement little things, does anyone know with any certainty exactly what is underneath them? Can anybody say there's a bunch of TCE, here's some heavy, here's some lead. Does anybody know that? Has, has there been any scientific studies? There's no way to do that. You can't use the LIGAR or any type of pen ground they penetrating that looking for stuff? Because the LIDAR will look for objects, but it can't yeah. tell you what those objects are made of. Yeah. Right, but it can tell you, it can give you at least some sense. We, there's five barrels here, there's something here. Is that fair to say? They did do that under the pad in the parking area. They had a radar it wasn't light, right. it was some sort of radar detection thing. To, and they found certain things and they dug up to see what they were. Yeah, and what, um, what did they find? They were looking actually for uh, fluorescent tubes that they thought there might be radioactive. Okay. 
and they found some of those, but they weren't the radioactive type, I guess. And now I'm drawing a blank on that. But there should yeah. be a report online about that. And then they found just some pieces of metal that they looked at. In terms of being able to detect chemicals, right, they right. couldn't detect chemicals, but they could detect you know, metal. They were looking for drums, that kind of thing. I get, I get and the follow-up to that would be, has there ever been any testing of any wells in a radius of a half a mile, a mile? Have all the wells around there been tested for heavy metals and that type of thing, that, to, that anyone, to anyone's knowledge? They tested four drinking water wells, which I'm, we're having this map redone to show the locations okay. of those. And uh, they found, according to this, he mentioned that in here, residential drink, absence of site contaminants in residential drinking wells located south of the site, which is the direction things are right. moving. I mean, that I think they have determined. They said they've been consistent with samples since the late 1990s. I'm not sure that that's true. I'm not sure that's true. Um, right. But because uh, I, <coughs> and one of them had some contaminant levels, and they bought the Hofsis property for a reason, obviously. So, is that the building next door? The gray building. Yeah, it looks like a yeah, they're something out it. of a horror movie. Oh, I mean, no, it's, it's sad because it's a historic. Don't it's nightmare a, on friendship. It does. Road. I say, don't <laughs> someone jump out. Because there's also a very swift running or a little creek that runs right before it that's washing down God knows what. And that's where the mills, the <coughs> two wells are going in that. Yes, area. and when I was jogging there, let me tell you, it was very powerful. I mean, I, you know, it was just, it was, it was a lot of flow. But yeah. So, and, I get, and the, my final question, I'm sorry I'm talking a lot, but I'm, all, I'm, I'm very excited to try to figure this out. But the third thing, has anybody, now they're throwing around there's no health issues, has anybody, to anyone's knowledge, ever had testing, blood work, medicals, anything like that? Because I will say on TCE, in, in, the, in the research I did, for instance, in Woburn, there was a cluster of leukemic kids, six, eight, ten of them. So they traced that to the, to the, to the upstream. The, uh, they were all pretty much on the same street or neighborhood. But TCE, for instance, it may not give you leukemia. It may affect your immune system in such a way that you're open to other illnesses and diseases. So that is a kind of a area where I think we could get, if we could somehow test people, and, and, and the questionnaire on the health questionnaire, that is really the, the key to this or, or in some level. That would probably be more tied to the employees who worked in the building and had exposure, right? Yes, and 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 and, and their health issues, right? Again, TCE has been linked with digestive kidney cancer, but it's also linked to atrial fibrillation, cardiac issues. So again, all of these these chemicals do something to you. The TCE does something to you, so it might not be as apparent, but it could lower the immune response, which is several studies have, have shown that. So that would be, again, I'm, I'm sorry I'm getting ahead, but that concerns me because, uh, you know, you don't want to see people suffer or... So I think that should be a whole sort so of track, side track, you know, right, one of right. several tracks we pursue, and maybe yes. you can take the lead on that, but, you know, <laughs> Part of the issue with this is the laws weren't in place when the plant started, right. so things were deposited and disposed of not in a way yeah. we would do now. So there probably was some exposure, but we haven't documented that at all, neither is DP. That's not in their purview. Right. Part of that process could be addressed during the interviews that we have oh, with yeah. yes. Yes. people. Yeah. Yes, and, and, yeah. and to that point, Bob, the, uh, again, in the research I've done, these questionnaires, it's not like five or six questions, you know, in the case I studied is, you know, 200, 300 questions. But the point being is there's a state epidemiologist, and I guess I don't know who he or she is, but they certainly could help. They, that's what we need is an, a, a, an epidemiologist who has no skin in the game. Mm -hmm. The other thing it would be worth doing is other plants like the Bangor one, you know, have, who else has pursued this approach, you know? So I guess I'm going to turn it to you to contact the state epidemiologist and, right. and um, you know, we can add to the list of questions today, but, you know, what, what is it we want to ask and who do we want to ask and right. what would get us there the quickest, you know, in terms of if, is there a risk? I mean, it's, I don't know why DEP doesn't do that. That was my concern. I said, this is the DEP. They're, they're obliged to 
take care of protect the citizens of Maine. They well, I think they figured the risk is in drinking water. I and mean, there's the malib there's some heavy metals in the stream, yeah. but I think we should just, you know, go I, off I, I'm not saying they're not valid concerns, right. but when Joe's here, you know, we can okay. I, sort of home in on the surface exposure okay, piece. Okay, that's fair. But and I'll then in terms of the employees, that's a whole other thing in terms of how we use the site. So it's it's a whole other set of questions because right. you know, if they been exposed in a negative way, then that's a whole other piece of this study that's separate from right. well, how we use the site. We now. still have a lot of people, don't we, that are retired from there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. We can yeah. add to that list. And I, I mean, I, it would be. Yeah, so we need to expand on that. And maybe, so I'm, what I'm suggesting is sure. we have a, a subset of this group pursue that. And we, the others, then we continue on trying to figure out how we can use the site because they, they're two separate. Things the, the two parallel there's the tracks. past exposure, yeah, and then there's okay. what we can do at the site now. Okay. Does that make Good sense? Point. Go to the epidemiologist at the yeah. state level. Wouldn't it be helpful to have something in hand before you go to say, we have indications there might be issues here, right? and we really think you should be involved, as opposed to going up there cold, Good saying... Good point, yeah. It, it, that's a great, it's like a chicken and egg thing. Yeah, you know, yeah. you, it, they can help figure it out, but you need to... That's a that's a, an excellent point. And maybe if you know a preliminary interviews with some subset some that, would be that to me something. would be the yeah. more prudent path because yeah. then you could say you know we've got 18 people with cardiac issues and five people died of renal cancer and oh by the way this is a cluster this is a normal normal uh, exposure would not indicate that this should happen. Yeah. Okay. Jen, you mentioned the Bangor plant. Yeah, there was a Sylvania plant. I don't know. It, I, I think it may have been similar in Bangor. It has been repurposed for something else. So okay, we haven't work. researched that to any degree yet, other than I, the example environmental covenant we have is from there. That was one of the questions I had was, this is obviously not the only site like this in the state. There's 2,000 over yeah. the country. So <coughs> are there other ways, other people have gone through this that we can pull from their experience. I'd be happy to yeah, contact people if they're interested. That would be a great thing to do, That'd like the starting with Bangor. <coughs> but yeah, pretty much every city in Maine, ha like Portland Waterfront, Bucksport, you name it, has that has had a manufacturing plant has used solvents like this. So there's a lot of these sites. But yeah, coming up with one or two, like the Bangor one, that might be similar in what they've done and how they're using it would be great. Yeah. Um, that well, would be fantastic. I, I Googled that and got, and there's, Sylvania has been sued. Several times, the, that, as a whole. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, for for TCE and mm -hmm. other, and I believe. And again, I'm not a chemist, <coughs> you know, but when you make these halogen lights, is there a process? Is there a lead or something or some heavy metal involved? They use molybdenum. No. no. Uh, is it? Oh, when well, when you made the lights. Yeah. When you oh yeah, they use molybdenum. Yeah. yeah. So that, that as they I use molybdenum and tungsten. Those two yeah. elements. Something. And I recall that there was an issue with that, and they disposed of it, or the workers were to it while they were making them, and there was, there was a suit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's one of our outstanding, my outstanding questions is the molybdenum. I mean, even the report we just got shows this really high level, um, and I don't understand what I'm reading. You know, again, we need Joe to help us decipher this, and he's good at that. Well, I, I, I can shed a little light on that again, okay. and we talked about it uh, last um, month. Um, molybdenum was on the docket, on the EPA's docket, to be regulated in sewage sludge that was applied to land. And they were going to um, uh, use the standard of 75 parts per million, which you're looking at that limit, which is, yeah, this is that's in parts per billion. Yeah. So this would be um, 75,000 parts per billion. So that was the original level that EPA wanted um, uh, to start <coughs> enforcing. Um, but they were convinced otherwise. And the reason why they were convinced otherwise is because it's a plant ni micronutrient and farmers need to put it on, m need to put molybdenum <coughs> on, um, on fields sometimes because nitrogen fixing bacteria that convert nitrogen into, uh, nitrogen in the air into ammonia and nitrate in the soil, <coughs> which is a plant mi micronutrient, it doesn't happen unless you have a, a few pots per million of molybdenum in the soil. So it's a n necessary micronutrient to plants, and I've done a little research on it, and again, I was using Wikipedia, uh, Wikipedia so I apologize for using Wikipedia. Um, but 
apparently there are some enzymes in the human body that require molybdenum, and there is a actual minimum daily adult requirement for molybdenum. So how does so this compare? Is what we need to know. <coughs> this is huge. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a hundred, and that's in groundwater. That's not in the soil. Right. But that is an, an admittedly very high number. So it's uh, coming from somewhere. It's c it's coming from somewhere, and. It, 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 it's, a, it's a very high molybdenum number, which is why I got involved with our little escapade with the $35,000 analyzer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, but it is a very high number. But, <coughs> it, you know, it's not, it doesn't bioaccumulate. The human body excretes it. Um, so it, it, low levels are not a problem. You actually need it to survive. But that is an admittedly very high number yeah. there. And that's yeah. where we need Joe to yeah. say, and, and you know, I've been asking this question since we started, so why didn't they do shallow soil samples along that stream, for exactly. instance, where we think it was put. So, so we still have questions for DP. So I would say as you read stuff, just write your questions and, and we can consolidate those. And then when, if we, we'll have the meeting on a day Mark can, I mean, uh, yeah, Max can come and um, try to get to the bottom of it, because I feel like we're not quite at the bottom of it, and it's quite disturbing because we've been trying for a year, almost a year now. Okay. Without, okay? I'm, I'm sorry. Where are we on the agenda? We are on uh, number three. Okay. And this is where I'm saying we can't really react to DP any more than, you know, saying those levels look high, and yeah. I still have lots of questions, but we need someone who really can understand this to be with Max when we mm -hmm. ask him the questions. So we'll try and get both of them here at the same time. Um, and, and put that aside for now. So Mike isn't here. I don't know if he, it sounds like he hasn't reestablished access, but he was working on it. But you have seen the documents on the timeline, you're saying. I, I opened up the timeline, but I really couldn't, you know, I, I could click on a document and get it. Oh. Um, but I had the, I had the thumb drive that Joe gave me uh, last meeting, so I've done a lot of research okay. on it so far. And have either of you been able to get on that? No, I was the one that said that you had said a problem. I, I just get this message saying it can't access the Dropbox or something like that. So, is there any way of duplicating the thumb drive that Joe gave to you? Sure, if you can get me a half a dozen thumb drives, it's easy to copy. Can you <laughs> copy it, maybe that off? Huh? Can you copy that? I copy. Oh my God, I don't want to give you a printed copy. I've run out of toner on 17 well, we'll, we'll times in a day. We have a little kitty here. It's no, a big, sometimes they are it'd be good to okay. add new things to I it, too, that. because That's a good okay. if you're able to use it. But yeah, they're huge files, and this is you know thousands of megabytes. So, or gigabytes, I should say, at this point. So, <laughs> okay. Um, and, and we don't have a, a website that they could be uploaded to? Is that what the timeline's supposed That's to be? That's the timeline's for. Okay. Right. And it was very handy. And it no. worked. It really worked. But the, the Dropbox has working. changed something. And, uh, so we'll try and get Mike to, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be in touch with Mike and Michael and see if he can keep working on it. Okay, so let's go on to the questions for former employees. Uh, we have one interview former um, Sylvania employees, so was it you that, who put these together? Are you, the it wasn't me. What's that? This I'm list sorry. came from? It came from Frank, who's never been to a meeting. Okay. <laughs> he, he, you know, he's, he's advising people on their income taxes for free. He's volunteered to do that. So he does it Friday mornings. Tax. Okay. After tax is over, actually, he's, he's a, he'll be with us and he'll, he'll help us. Okay. okay. But he did this on his own. It's really nice of him to do. Yeah, so this doesn't attach, uh, address the public health no. end of things at all. No, nope. so that's why it's just a draft. Yeah, but I think it's good. The, we were thinking we'd try to get, find out if there were any other things we should know about where chemicals were deposited, if people, because mm -hmm. we've had a couple people come up and say, you know, we threw a bunch of drums over there. Um, so there may be other things we don't know, and we just want to get to the bottom of it. Um, I don't know if we should have, you know, maybe a sweet, a short number of questions. Do you have you had any illnesses that you think might be connected to this, or do you know of people? Yeah, maybe start something with something cursory, simple. and then if there's a little red flag, then maybe and then we'll up those people a little bit more. Yeah, so if yeah. you, I don't know if you want to come up with, you know, have uh, a, a, I could a short a section of questions to help us find out if that's a lead we should pursue. I basically, that would be great. 
All right. I'll Does Osram or uh, Osram guarantees this liability? Is that right? Do they know that you're the health risk side? Uh, that you're look, talking to employees? Not yet. Doesn't matter. They're not employees anymore. I think they just got to right, sign a consent. Right, but do they know that you're you're going down that path? I'm just curious. Uh, they don't. Uh, well, Max CC'd yeah. my list of questions, which were the last list was was a public health risk assessment ever done? Yeah. And this answer is still kind of vague in my mind, but um, so he knows, and he, he CC'd that to all the lead bands people. They, they so they're aware. So they know what our discussion is, but and they can see these. Maybe they're watching. Right. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, you well, know, no, I, I just it's that might open up, you know, some challenges for this group. I, that's I, what I was thinking. One thing we could ask I the agree. employees yeah. is whether they were asked upon leaving employment or before being employed. Non-disclosure. To sign a non-disclosure yeah. agreement. Good point. I mean, we feel like um, we need to know this to go forward, yeah, but on the other sure. hand, you know, just to put it to bed, because it just feels like it's never really been dealt with in all the documents we've looked at, or we haven't yeah. gotten a clear, other than they're saying yes, uh, no significant health risk, because they're focusing on the groundwater, but we feel like the surface still hasn't yeah. been addressed. And in terms of health risk for people that work there, that's, that is a whole nother avenue that we weren't charged with looking at initially. My understanding is all they would need to do is sign informed consent. I'm going to fill this out. Here's, I agree to it, and I think you, that's that's what you need. And people may, but or may there not. there could be the confounders of uh, again. Everyone's brought up some point. You know, are they still getting pensions? Are they going to want to badmouth their company? Are they going to want to really disclose that? I mean, is there some? Or there may be not that much to disclose, and that's I think true, you should be open to that. Yeah, I mean, right. I, this, you know, we're doing this now in part because of your concerns and also feeling like the public right. health risk hasn't been completely explained to us right. if it has been addressed. Um, so I feel like that next meeting or yeah. you know, and, and Max unfortunately I'm is new to yeah. this project too, the person who's the project director, the I person who was there before and left. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to say, I would love to, and if no one if everyone say, hey, I'm healthy, I'm great, I, th that's my goal, I, I'm very open minded. But I, we can, and I'd like to be upfront with Max and say, you know, has have you dealt with it? You know, it's beyond their purview, basically. Right. Is the issue. So, I think it will be our. It'll be on us to do it if we want right. to do it. Along those <coughs> lines, would it be fair and prudent to get more of the public, the media involved in what's going on, whereas more people could come forward, or maybe, you know. Have have some media. I say did, I did invite them to today's meeting and, yeah. and sent an agenda to them. Yes, did they come? Okay. They're not here. But I they have taken an interest in the yeah. past, and they still have it. It's just a matter of probably of scheduling. But I feel like we need to do this next piece of homework first. first. You know, because I can just see rumors flying. Yeah. I mean, we need to figure out how we're going to address this. You know, get it. Start okay. putting a list together. And um, okay. they're welcome. The press is welcome to come, but you know, I just feel like we need to not speak in an alarmist way right. until right. we have information that would allow us to do that. Because I'm not sure that's going to help our cause. And mm -hmm. the I'm not defending DEP, but to set the record straight, uh, yeah. probably five years ago, they sent out a public request for information about the site. Yes. Um, my wife and I responded to it because we knew somebody who sure. dumped stuff there, and we sent the information to them and drew a map. They don't know who that guy was. Right. He did not want to be <laughs> have his identity revealed. But the DEP took the step of asking the question, and maybe it was too general. Maybe mm -hmm. it wasn't local enough. Maybe they should have gotten people here involved in ferreting out the information. But they tried. Mm -hmm. and, and, and as far as I know. Uh, other than the fact that they did a, an x-ray of the parking lot in the area where people said that stuff had been dumped. Right. Beyond that, I don't think they've done anything. I don't think they've taken soil samples, for example. They did, well, I did have the map of the soil sample. I, it was, they did do some. Yeah, this is where they took shallow, so these black circles. Yeah, the areas that were indicated were way out here. Okay. Way over here. So. Yeah, that's a question you know, for us they, in they the future. Why don't area. you? Yeah, that and along where the stream was exactly. created. 
So yeah. we you, just you, need to ask those questions. Yeah, of yeah. course. And I was wondering as I was jogging by, <laughs> he said, why did they cement all these things? I mean, I think my mind goes to like, is there a body there? I mean, yeah. you don't want people, if you cement the, that whole thing, and it, it really is the whole deal, why cement? You know, could you just, I just, I said, why is there so much cement here? You, that you, when well, you the do foundations the, of the old building. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. what. Okay, yeah, yeah, so it's not like they. All right, no, so no, no. No. that was there I'm, when the building. That's what the building sat on. Okay, yeah. so it's not some nefarious. Some of the parking lot, and yeah. and that's considered a good thing because it's keeping water mm -hmm. from flushing whatever was underneath. Okay, so yeah. it's not it keeps you from. Yeah, so I, I guess I can see they're just like too. looking for the yeah. worst case, yeah. and there may be a worst case, but I feel like you can approach it that way, or you can approach it. You know, having some faith in DEP before right. you accuse them of collusion or whatever it is. I, would, I, Janet, <laughs> I, I please, I, I don't want you to, in any way or anybody in this community to think that I am looking for the worst. I am not. Okay. Well, so someone's got to be. Somebody well, I, yeah, I, I guess, I guess what I'm saying is I think, with all due respect to the community, you guys are very zealous, but has this been going on for how long? I mean, how long has the stuff been sitting there? The pace is glacial. What if all of these years people have been exposed to something? So I feel it's a moral obligation to people. I live right on that river, yeah. to speak up. And yeah. I, but again, I'm not looking. I'm yeah. hoping, uh, quite to the contrary, Janet. I'm hoping I, that it's you nothing. Find nothing, yes. But again, I don't want that you to, to feel that way. But but again, I'm not going to sit here and just sit on my hands and not speak what I feel is in my heart and what I know through science. Yeah. There was there was that one issue, uh, if I recall correctly, in the report about. A leak in one of the drainage pipes. A glass. There was a glass drain uh, that they had to use for disposing of acids. Yes, oh, I read that. And there yeah. was a, there was a leak there. Yeah. Do we know where that pipe went to, or where that leak would have ended up? I mean, would blue all blueprints tell us where that? Mm, I don't know. Was? Write that down as a question for Max. <coughs> and it, you know, I have been. You know, when I have questions, I email him. Um, so, you know, if you could reference the document. It's yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll find the document. That would be helpful. Um, and if you want to uh, share that with us once you find that. Sure. I, I'm drawing okay. a blank We all have one another's email addresses now, right? Yeah. Okay. For instance, okay. yeah we're all on the distribution on the list. Just yeah. by re hitting reply all reply to you all, would yeah. get us all yeah. on it. Yeah. So I'd say any questions, you know, big questions and little questions, we, sh we just need to keep asking them and try to... But again, you know, when Max responds, I can't really understand if he's answered the questions completely. And that's where Joe comes in. Because <laughs> it's not, it's very technical. And we're not soil scientists or chemical engineers or remediation specialists, so. I have, I have one more yeah. question. Uh, John, um, if there were 2,000 sites similar to this in the state, wouldn't the state epidemiologist know of any clusters related to outbreaks of illnesses related to Good this question. exposure? For to my knowledge, like for instance in the hospital, this is a horrible flu season. So you're required by <coughs> law to report all cases of influenza. Right. How that, I'm not 100% sure of the actual, uh, I don't know if someone has to bring it to their attention okay. and say, hey, could you look so they, they, just would, they just wouldn't see so like a spike of yeah. For instance, TB is another one. T TB flu, yeah. and that type of stuff. <clears throat> but that's a good question. Okay. And the 2,000 sites—that's how many sites DEP manages. So that's why they aren't on top of this following right. up sure. little right, question. Right, yeah. And they're not all, you know, the same suite of chemicals by any means. But right. I'm sure there are quite a few that right. are okay. parallel. So that'd be good to find out. Okay. Well, do we want to go on to the? list of questions or do you want so you're going to add a, a introductory set of health related ones so i'm going to write some questions up with uh, i'm going to research it and i will call the state okay. epidemiologist and see what he or she okay. recommends but i i mean i'm and maybe there are some plants like you said in other parts of the state right. that have had issues that you know so and, they I, have and I think the dep i i mean i'm going to trust them but I just think it's nothing that they're doing personally. I think they're just overwhelmed. They are. They've got so many, they're so good. many sites that I could see yeah. that you have to be proactive to get their attention. Okay. You have to do something to say, hey, wait a minute. You need to look at this. Or they're going to just say, I'm sorry. That's true. And they've said as much, basically. Exactly. Yeah. 
they'll do what we ask them to do, but they and they feel like this is being handled as legally the way it should be, and that's so they're not going to do more unless we ask them. And we have been asking them. Um, okay, so. So sorry, if, if I could just interrupt. So you're yeah. going to put together some questions on the medical side. Yeah, just, just, just yes. Go ahead. We could add those as items four, five, or six to this list, and then maybe go through the list as sort of trading. Yeah, emails. yeah. I, I'm not going to be. Maybe the have something finalized okay. by the next meeting, so we can actually sit down so and talk right. to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if people want to ex start expanding this list, I mean, yeah. I, I'm. You know, if people know any of these people and say, who else do you know that worked at Sylvania, kind of a thing, that's still around. Because <laughs> it's a short list. Yeah, I um, have a lurking concern that this list will get shorter if we don't start acting. That's macabre. Yeah, there is a time to get. I mean, Clint. I, I just have one, one question about the list and the, uh, and the interviews. Are they going to be here? Are we going to go into their homes? Um, you thought, and I thought you had a good idea was to bring the map in here, set the map on the table, and bring them in one by one and go through the questions and talk about the location and. Or go to their house if they prefer. If they can't travel. I think it should be up to them. Yeah, I yeah. Think some so people too. might feel more comfortable in their own home. Yeah, I think probably most people would. But if it's, if if it's not in a group, it's just just one, one on or one or a couple people talking one on one with the person. I, mm -hmm. you know, I I agree. It's where they're comfortable. Yeah. yeah. But that's what we're thinking. Is somebody going to step up and take that particular role of being the interviewer? Somebody needs to. I would be happy to do some of them. I don't know how to do all. Yeah, I, I would. I would. I would help. Help yeah. out. Sure. We could. We could good. I, I would help out. Yeah. 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 And or, I've or done it that could before. Could be a pair. Yeah. You can split yeah. up when you need to. Yeah. So yeah. So if we have the list of questions, expand the list and. Well, one one of the things I thought we could ask is, uh, can you? Uh, refer any other names of former employees because we we only have ten or so here. Yep, I and think that's the last question. Can we uh, yeah. and can we formalize this too um, in like a spreadsheet form so that the answers are organized? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be a good idea. Yeah. So collect the data. Does everybody is everybody here familiar with like Excel or, or I don't know whether there's any other. Or DBase three or something. I guess everybody knows Excel. Sounds like Mark. Is, I know so. Excel. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, it doesn't have to be on the computer. Sorry. But you could have, <laughs> you could print them out and then you could they write could in. Transcribed and, ones and, and then you're transcribed yeah. later. Yeah. 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 That I could yeah. bring my granddaughter. <laughs> no, no, no. I think. If you no, it's got to be organized. It's got to be organized yeah. so it's in useful form. Of that's, course. That's of the course. only. Sure. The only. And so you can manipulate it if you need to. Yeah. I mean, you know, summarize it. Be like. <coughs> One of the questions I had about the existing list is uh, 1D. I wasn't sure what we were trying to get to by asking them their opinion of Sylvania as an employer. Yeah, that's a kind of loaded question. I mean, one, it, it, whatever they say, we don't want that to become ever public. The people aren't going to answer that because they receive pensions from that. Right. Yeah. So I, I, I don't want to. I mean, it's, what, what, what does it do for us to? Yeah, we should probably take that out. I would strike that because if they say yes, there might be a bias. Well, or whatever they say, no, say is going to bias yeah, their, exactly. the, the responses to the rest right, of the right. questions. And if they do have a strong feeling, they'll probably tell you anyway. Right. Right. So I think we don't need to ask that. They may not know what types of chemicals that's. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll volunteer. I'll do the volunteer um, to uh, create the spreadsheet based on whatever list of questions we all agree on. Yeah. I'll volunteer to yeah. enter that. Now this is, it's not going to be quite as useful because these answers aren't yes, no kind of answers. They're going to Understood. Be I mean, it'll, yeah. it'll have a, like, a, 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 you'll go in there with a clipboard and there'll be the question right. and there'll be a space for you to write something in there. Yeah. You don't have to use a computer. It'll be all oh, I, I transcribed. Oh, I suggest we're doing the uh, initial interviews, yeah. the paper copies. Yes. Great. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, the purpose of these questions is simply to get at, are there any other places we should be looking at on the property? Is there any money for me to be, be reimbursed for my ink and toner? Because <laughs> this is going to be a long list. Yeah, I can, I can figure it out. Okay. <laughs> or use this 
pounds per year. This is this is a very long list. Hopefully, if my budget passes the way I would like it to, we every, every little committee will have some type of money for things like this because it's okay. getting to the point where we actually are doing work. Yeah. Coffee pot. Okay, so next <laughs> month, next month. We have month. one in the break room. <laughs> okay, I'll do it anyway, but <laughs> it'd be nice. And this this could get very expensive. It could. Um, can we have the list of questions? the revised list of questions available next month, and can we take a vote on it at that time to approve it so that I don't do this twice? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so if, if you want to use me yeah. as the battering ram for Putting doing the questions, I can pull it all together. Yes. I mean, copy everybody on the emails, but I'll right. be making... You could put it together into one. Putting it together just based email on people's the question into, into stuff. the group, mm -hmm. yep. and then you look at it and... Just yeah, yeah, I'm I responsible think responsible for coming yeah. up with the final form. That's all. Sure. Well, I just and I think it. everybody, if they c come up with, I mean, something that they feel is appropriate, by all means, put it in and, there. Then, and then get it in there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we don't. I don't know what. Well, and it could be that this will be refined once you interview a few people. This list. I mean, I'm guessing it. See how it might be. Yep. Okay, we'll think of new questions that sure. have potential. Okay, well, I guess we don't need to, to dwell on this at the moment. So are we, any other thoughts on six? We'll just get a final list to go out with and mm -hmm. keep adding names and get an Excel spreadsheet. And get, okay, um, so Michael Thayer's, Michael, what'd you find? Yes, um, I haven't been in, involved in this particular technology for years. I was involved with it about 30 years ago. And it's come a long way. It's much, much better now. Um, and this is with regard to finding uh, metals on the site, heavy metals. And, um, and again, I was a little surprised to see in groundwater 130 parts per million of molybdenum, which is a lot of molybdenum. Mm -hmm. And despite what I said about non-toxicity, you know, everything's toxic at some level, and that's a lot of molybdenum. Um, so, so I contacted a couple of firms, and uh, I'll, I'll pass this around. This is uh, one particular um, uh, analyzer that's available. It's a point and shoot. You go to the soil sample, and I think you have to put a filter paper on it before you, so you don't cross-contaminate each, each individual sample, but you just point and shoot at the sh whatever you're looking at, and it'll tell you how much molybdenum's in it. It's a process called X-ray fluorescence. You bombard it. has a built-in x-ray tube, like what you get in the dentist yeah. office, yeah. and it bombards the element with um, uh, um, x-rays, and that knocks an electron out, and then when the next electron falls back in, it gives off a, another x-ray of lower energy that is very specific frequency, and they can, the detector can determine um, uh, which element you're looking at. And it'll do like 30 elements at a time. And this is a, a list of the limits of detection. Um, and again, we're looking mostly at molybdenum, but there are some other elements on site that have been arsenic. Arsenic, yeah. But those are very, very low levels. That could, those could be naturally occurring levels of arsenic. Yeah. Lead, uh, lead. Uh, you know, lead is uh, ubiquitous in the environment too right. because we had leaded gas gotcha. years ago. It, it'll do lead, lead as well. As a matter of fact, a lot of uh, the less expensive analyzers like this are used in homes to go over and see whether you have lead paint in your house. Right. A little machine just, just like this. Um, th so the technology exists to find out what's in the top layer of soil. And if you want to go deeper than that, you have to dig up samples and measure the sample. But certainly, in the context of being able to go out and find out what's in that drum, if, see if there's any molybdenum or tungsten or whatever in, in it, you can find out very quickly. Um, two plies in the ointment, the, the machine itself, costs about $36,000, or $36,000. It's leasable for a week at a time at about $2,000 um, uh, a week. Um, but the other fly in the ointment is, we don't own this site. No. And <laughs> you can't go we're, on not gonna, <laughs> we're not going to walk on that site and do our own investigations. Um, uh, if we did, we'd probably be served with an injunction pretty quickly. Um, but we can go to DEP and say, look, we have a lot of concerns here, 
and you know we don't want the state to go to the expense of doing formal analytical methods which can be pretty pricey by the time you uh, uh, take samples uh, they use a chain of custody send it to an, a, 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 um, a certified lab and then get the results that can get very pricey um, but for a, a rapid screening procedure I think the state could probably afford two thousand dollars to spend a week on the site and determine whether there are any molybdenum hotspots. Yeah, and we, that, that's what we should ask. And that's yeah. the question. I yeah. agree with you. That's yeah. the question for Max. Yeah, because yeah. we've been asking them about a wider, I'd like to see a soil survey, shallow soil survey done pretty much on the entire property. I mean, because yeah. I don't know what spacing yeah, you'd want. And again, you, you can't see last what's last under the slab. You can only see what's on the surface. Of, of, yeah, of the surface of the, yeah. okay. Indeed, he must know that. They may have one of these yeah. already. All right, so that'll be a question. Yeah. And Joe has been pushing for, you know, soil surface sampling, too, on yeah. the whole thing. And, and for some reason, well, they, again, aren't thinking of that as a, a major health risk, I guess, so that's why they're not doing Well, again, molybdenum isn't a real serious health risk. Yeah. Um, I, so wouldn't, I wouldn't drink the water, but just walking around on the site, you're not going to get a dose of molybdenum from it. It's in like only if you're digging something up, say you want to put a trail in. Don't put a sandbox in there for the kids. Right. That. <laughs> okay, so that will, that's how we'll handle that. Bring it. Child care center. To the issue of not being able to go on the site, what access do we have? We have none. We so have we none. legally are not allowed to walk on it? We, we legally, nobody should be on the site. It's not our, it, you're, technically right. you're trespassing, it, and there it, was a, it was posted at yeah, one okay, point. So it's not posted it does say, it says do not trespass. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, you know, there are people who yeah. walk on it, yeah. but that's at their own, okay. right. you know. But you're not, it's not our site, so we can't, and we don't have right of entry. There's nothing in the public health, um, safety, <coughs> welfare, that gives us the ability to go on that I was site. just curious if the topic had been broached with any, Conversations with Lead Vance or any of those people since they knew this task force was being formed and we were exploring the yeah. uh, issues. Well, they were here. I mean, when they were here, I mean, and, and I just, you know, I think we need to reiterate. I, I, they've been painted with a very broad brush of not cooperating. And I think that they tried, and I think the prior town manager ignored it. So. Yeah. I just think that that needs to be out there, is yeah. that they haven't, at least since I've been here and gotten involved in this, they've been good with us. Um, and I think they tried prior and were just ignored. So, um, you know, I, I just want that out there, that it's not always them saying no or not. And, I, and we've never asked oh, them for yeah, the right that, of entry. That's what I'm saying. Right. Have, we've have never you? asked them for right of entry. Mm -hmm. but. We should, if that's something we ever, you know, if we, if we right. would like to go walk the property, I think they'd, I think they would probably say yes, but they'd want their people and their professionals with us when we did it. Yeah. And we need to ask that because if we're going to talk about how it's going to be used, we need to have a much better feel for what is on the property. So I, I think it's worth asking them yeah. mm -hmm. that just, and, and not in the frame of we want to do soil sampling and we think there's more contaminants, but we'd, we'd like to start thinking about the environmental covenant and repurposing piece and mm -hmm. you know need to look at the part near the river and you know not yeah, just I, what you can see by the path. I'd so. love to have a walking tour. Of yeah we need site. a tour so I think if we could ask for it maybe we could just ask them for a, a tour of, of this task force to get a better sense of how we can use it. And that segues right yeah. into Ron Phillips. Right. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Finally. Uh, oh are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are funny. I think we are. <laughs> Oh, well, no, just thanks for, uh, to Bob and for inviting me. I can see why he did, um, because I had uh, expressed interest uh, through Julie in getting more information about you know, the status of your whole effort here, because there are some uh, here in Waldeboro, uh, here at the table, um, others, Seth, I think, included, but many who are interested in the solar installation potential for that site. Um, and we have walked on it, or trespassed, I guess, <laughs> uh, and have done a little pre preliminary research very much in the beginning and uh, of this. But I, I'm very glad to hear now why Bob invited me here, because I thought you would uh, were much further ahead yeah. uh, on this than, than what, you're, uh, what I've learned. And yeah. uh, this is ra rather interesting. I, I could go on here, but 
Um, this is going to take some time. Uh, there could be a parallel track of an effort made to, I th think what you suggested last time, Bob, to keep in play um, a uh, further consideration of a significant solar uh, installation in Waldebar building off of the uh, landfill, uh, one that is, is geared to start up, uh, hopefully, and uh, w without issues. Uh, PUC, apparently, I learned, has come out uh, with a uh, 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 accelerating the date by which they want to implement new rules. So March 15th? They, yeah, they upped it from May 1st or something, so I, I don't know what the exact date, so that, I don't know what's going on there, but that doesn't sound great. Um, so I don't know what, what to uh, uh, share with you. I, we were looking at, uh, I have a network and relationships to uh, people in Maine who uh, uh, are very active in doing the solar uh, energy, you know, development. Uh, Revision Energy is a centerpiece to a lot of this. You know Revision, I think. Uh, they've, we, we're in discussions about this site, but everybody, you know, based on this meeting, uh, this is on, uh, you know, a different, different track here. We have to uh, be careful. But that was the gist of uh, my coming to learn more about uh, where you, where you all are at. And just maybe I could, I've got some ideas just listening to you. I'll share them later or whatever. But, uh, I don't know what else. By, by the way, I'm Ron Phillips. I, I don't know if I've met uh, some of you. So um, we live on 220, right up the street uh, near the Sylvania site, uh, and I've been there 40 years. I, I was the uh, founder and uh, head of Coastal Enterprises, which is based in Brunswick. Uh, I left about a year and a half ago and uh, trying to re-engineer myself to, you know, what things uh, I might be helpful with here in Waldebar to stay closer to home, uh, so to speak. I spent half my life on planes and out of state doing, uh, raising capital and making investments in, in Maine as well as uh, throughout the country in rural America. So uh, I spent a lot more time away than, <laughs> than here. Uh, but we have, uh, uh, my wife uh, has a 200 year history here in, in Waldebar. Uh, and uh, so we uh, can, you know, hopefully can make some contributions uh, to economic uh, aspects. There are other things we're, I'm looking at uh, as well. So you're... Uh, Mike there. Mike and... Uh, Johnny Cosno. Okay, hi. Yeah. Mark Eckert on, okay. on Friendship Street. Okay, right. So we're all close neighbors, yeah. actually, and yeah. uh, uh, which is great. So I, I don't know what else I can say. We were looking at uh, maybe a one megawatt uh, size. That That's the... Uh, I think that's the level that we were talking about. Uh, getting a hold of five acres, it would be best probably if the town owned it, um, and because uh, then you can work a deal with the town <laughs> to develop the the site, uh, and it would uh, uh, provide uh, energy for. Uh, well, uh, I don't know where the school is on this, or the uh, uh, you want some uh, beneficiaries to uh, join in with the uh, benefits of the. Savings. The, uh, the mobile home park might be a possibility. Uh, you know, different ways to uh, uh, create users of that benefit, and then to uh, um, uh, what I'd like to do. And you mentioned keep it simple, stupid. Well, I yeah. I have a tendency to get more complex, <laughs> which is a problem I face. Um, and uh, what I'd like to see happen is and. Janet's aware of this a little bit too, but there are people in Waldebar that have some resources financially uh, that would like to make investments in things that are going to help the town or help the, uh, the community. So I'd like to see a uh, consortium of private investors uh, kick this off. The size of the uh, investment would probably be about probably be about a million and a half dollars would be the total um, that we're talking about. Uh, and half of that probably as an investment, you know, equity uh, to take advantage of the tax credit. But I would love to see uh, a number of Wallabora residents uh, make the investment to make this happen. Yeah. Well, I just got a question. Has anything that you've heard here or know, does that affect the way you going forward? Or would, as far as the whole package, or, or, and, and conversely, is there anything that we could do Town could do to 
help make it m more uh, a better course for you? So it's a two-part question. Yeah, Is yeah. There anything? No, I, I appreciate that question because yeah. I can see uh, places in there where uh, we might be able to navigate. Um, I, I think in terms of feasibility, if, if we want to go down this path in Waldebar for a larger scale uh, solar uh, farm, um, um, it is appropriate to look at other sites. I mean, it's just due diligence. You just don't want to yeah. assume anything. So I, I, I was not on that path. Now I'm a little bit more on that path <laughs> because of this. Um, uh, second, uh, when you start talking about the health issues and the in interviewing employees and so forth, uh, this is a little bit more complex uh, than what I thought might happen. So uh, I don't know, um, I, I just don't know how to, I got, I got to think about this. I, uh, for example, uh, I don't know if you've been thought about talking to the union. Uh, I think that I think they were unionized that employee. I don't those know, no, but that's like we can and, ask one uh, of the employees. You know, right? you're getting into things here now that could really surprise a lot of people right. as to it. So I'm a little little concerned about um, uh, how what your relationships might be to Led Vance and Osram in this. Um, my tendency would be to talk with them to do some structure some kind of involvement. Right. If you to tell you the truth, I mean maybe. To, to have them engaged with this process because that would be good for them in terms of a planned uh, utilization of the facility. But if you're getting into some places where there's uh, potential uh, liabilities, legal, liabilities, yeah. yeah. Uh, so now I, I don't know how to. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, a, that's a difficult question yeah. because there is an uh, ongoing remediation effort there, and the more recently discovered presence of molybdenum in the soil, um, if you put a megawatt of solar panels on there, how do you remediate it after the solar right. panels are up? And yeah, even just yeah. installing the solar panels, if you've got to put, I don't, I have no idea how they were installed, but if they were on foundations, you, that means you've got to dig in the soil, which yeah. might in interfere with the soil va vapor, the, the soil vapor extraction system, yeah. and you, you're moving molybdenum around, you know, you get dust control issues, is the dust going to migrate off the site? Yeah. I think the good news on these solar <sighs> installations is that there is a surface uh, structure that you put You just put on, put on, put on there without... I don't, I don't think there's uh, uh, much, uh, uh, you know, movement around the... But, but there would be some site preparation. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, so I don't know. I, I'm just... Uh, you got to talk to Leadvance about that. Uh, well, I've you know, I, I, I nobly and uh, naively sent Julie uh, a wonderful letter, I thought. It was well-crafted. <laughs> uh, asking for information. What's your con who are your contacts? Give me some site plans, you know, that kind of stuff. And so I get this answer back, you know, come to our meeting. Uh, I see what you're saying now. Um, but uh, no, I would. We would love to talk uh, with Led Vance uh, and get inside. But I, but I'm not sure that it's appropriate how, how to do that right now with you guys. We felt busy. The, <laughs> we felt the marker was that environmental covenant. Right. Yeah. No, Once it is a marker. We designed that and got it in place. Yeah. Which is going to take is. a little. Yeah. Then it makes sense to yeah. talk. Yeah. And that's one yeah. question I have for Max: Is can we put that in place for part of the property? Now yeah. I'd love to. We'd love to know that. Yeah. Do you Probably. really want it though? Because we don't know anything right now yeah. about the property. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't put anything in place right. but, until but you actually know. Until you actually know what's there. Yeah. Like and you yet, said, if you haven't done this, if, if if they haven't done soils down by the river or anything like that, why would we want to put the environmental covenant in place unless we know what's actually there? Well, right? that's the part that mystifies me because, from DP's point of view, we can put one on now. And that's oh, why they, they that say they are. Yeah, too. David Wright, when we talked to the, right. the boss of Max, said uh -huh. that right when we started doing the research practically. So that's where we're, we're confused. Yeah, but, I, but what was the 2020 date oh, then? That was for the RECRA, that they were going to meet the requirements of RECRA, okay. uh, the, all okay. the indicators, which supposedly they are, and yet they're putting in two new wells. See, this is why I feel like. Why is this? They're putting in two new wells to see that they think oh. it might be migrating farther south, and yet they're saying it's under control. So well, it, it's a mystery. Case, um, I mean, I, probably for the town, you, you, you're looking at getting yourself in a position, at least, of being satisfied, let's say, that you could put an RFP out. Yeah. 
and you have a covenant that protects you to uh, invite something to happen. Yeah. Yeah. If you f are at that level, that's that's a good place to focus on because then I'm not there. I'm not <laughs> there. Right. No, you're not. Unfortunately, and we were uh, hoping we would be, but yeah. the other side of it is, if in terms of a private development initiative. Uh, there was some relationship to Leadvance. I keep saying Leadvance and Osram. Because well, it's Leadvance now, but it's Leadvance. right. But that doesn't Osram actually? Uh, uh, ha isn't the structure of that uh, immunity to liability that uh, has been o has been offered by Os Osram to Leadvance as a result of that? Ledvance has been purchase. sold. Ledvance has been sold. Osram owned it. It's been sold to another group of companies, including the Chinese. That sale did not cancel Osram's obligation. Right. That's what I'm getting at. So. But it makes it more complicated. So who are you dealing Ledvance with? Ledvance is number Ledvance. one. Ledvance. Ledvance is on the on the on the spot here. And if we don't get satisfaction from Ledvance, then what do we do? Go to Germany and sue Osram. It just makes it because Osram is no longer the direct owner, but still maintains responsibility. Yeah. It makes it a bit more yeah. complicated. Well, um, and they, you know, DEP at one point was talking about putting in a a letter of credit or some kind of bond. Mm -hmm. And our question was, well, how much money mm -hmm. is this going to be for? You know, is Osram going to stand behind it? And what are the conditions going to be to pulling it? Because pulling one of those things is like pulling teeth out of an elephant. Banks don't like them to be pulled. Mm -hmm. So it, it, there's a lot of stuff out there that still has to be talked about. Well, my point is that a conversation with Ledvance and or whatever the combination is on Osram um, could be interesting. That, and, but I'm not sure how to have that now uh, with uh, the work you're doing. That's, well, we uh, can go ahead, sir. I, I just wanted to interject what's in the conversation I've been long interested in this site for exactly this sort of grid scale solar development. It seems interesting. But strategically, as far as your work is concerned, the advance and the liability and the DEP, um, and, and for example, the conversation you just had about walking the site, uh, I think you may have an almost unique opportunity here to approach the advance in a proactive, positive way, simultaneously. And we, we think we may have this terrific idea to reuse this site. You know, which doesn't mitigate anything about the remediation or looking deeper into the wells or whatever, monitoring the plume, migration, stuff like that. Uh, but we give them the feeling that we would really like to work with you. We're not an adversary. Right. We just, everybody wants to clean it up and reuse it. Yeah. And, the, and the walking request, the access to the, to the site, which I think pretty much everybody, including DP, agrees is not hazardous to walk around. Right. Other than tripping over a rebar or something like that. That seems like a unique opportunity here. To approach lead vents with. Yeah. And, and at yeah. the same time, for example, suggest or discuss or mention this potential municipal private solar my, question. My yeah. problem with that, if I'm sorry, is that I don't want to give them leverage. And, and if any, because we don't know at this point how the problem is defined, I, I'm reluctant to give them leverage that they could then turn around and use against us sometime down the road. Uh, that could complicate cleaning up the number one issue, which is to determine the problems on that site. So I, and, and I'll tell you, the, the problems with cleaning up that site are going to be huge. And I'll, I'll tell you the reason why. We get molybdenum on the soil, okay? You want to excavate that soil, how is that going to impact your solvent recovery system, your solvent mediation system? It's going to be really hard to remediate that site for beneficial use other than something really low intensity like a puck. Or solar. Or solar. Or solar. Or solar. Yeah. Solar. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. what we're trying wouldn't, to say. Wouldn't that be yeah. perfect as a huge fan of solar energy? I think that would just be great. Yeah. Just no, I mean, that would just be like justice. win, win, win. We're it's making an line. assumption that it is a low impact. Right. I'm just, yeah. And, and that we need to get to a feasibility uh, for the size and shape of that. Uh, and that's <coughs> that's the question, how to... How to uh, open that door, and then there is this issue of the leverage you're talking about against lead vests. I mean, I am worried now about, I wasn't aware of this, uh, even these interviews you're doing are, I mean, that that's starting down a road that uh, could blow up. Yeah. And it should blow up, perhaps, but 
Um, you know, I, if, if I were doing that, those interviews, I was just thinking as you go, going through it, uh, there are people in Waldebar that know, do know a lot and mm -hmm. have a lot of history around that plan. I, I don't know them all, but uh, you might want to test these questions out yeah. with a couple people and do some preliminary work because this yeah. could really, uh, it may go nowhere. It may be Hopefully just fine and innocent, but I, I don't know. <laughs> that. And the union is a big issue. If, there, if it was unionized, uh, there are people in unions that uh, are just, you know, uh, they dedicate their lives to going after this stuff, as you might know, or some of them might know, and that, that's a good thing, but it's also uh, volatile. Uh, mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> I, I got, I got I, so much stuff is going through my mind now. I've got to go to you with it, Bob. Sorry. Yeah. When you say blow up, I, I think I know where you're going with that, mm -hmm. but as a matter of course, what is this blow up? Mean, well, you the, I, I, I get that from what you, uh, uh, the, the contribution you were right. making uh, in this meeting uh, in terms of the health uh, hazards right. and the residual effects of workers at that plant and sicknesses that may have developed. Sure. Uh, uh, you know, Maine Yankee went through this. There's their experiences with that task force in, in Wisconsin. I was thinking as, as you were talking. Uh, about some of the effects, uh, not just from radon, but the uh, higher incidences of leukemia, whatever. But um, what what are the uh, sure. uh, effects that have left behind? And, and, and you don't have an attorney or some of the infrastructure to kind of, uh, at the moment, right. to kind of uh, pay attention to that stuff. So suppose there were uh, at, uh, some really serious things. Yeah, no, I, I mean, that's been that's going in my saying. mind, and I, I, it's a really multifaceted, multi-level, yeah, yeah. intricate thing we have here. And then, Bob, I, I, you say leverage, and I'm asking, as far as leverage, do you mean giving them ammunition to then fire back at us? Or Not to fire mm -hmm. back at us, but to oh, use just against us. Well, if you guys don't play ball with us, you know, we're not too interested in the solar projects anymore, you know? I see. Okay. That, that kind of stuff. That kind of if stuff. you go into a partnership, yeah. then we become, uh, we're which is... Adversaries, well, potentially. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's true. Well, I do agree with Seth, though, that we can still ask them for a tour because we're exploring. Our, our yeah. mission is yeah. to explore repurposing right. the site. Any outstanding issues with the contaminants and mm -hmm. none of I mean, I, I've walked just a little bit of it on the shore just as I got out of my canoe one day, but I haven't really walked the site. You know? If you get that language of, of the Bill of Health, the, the covenant language, and th which they say they're willing to. They said they were, the DEP, DEP. let DEP. us not say this, DEP said they, they could do this now. They feel like this is something they could place on the Well, project. then why don't you get that, what that language says. I have the sample. It's actually kind and, of scary. And do due diligence on it. I mean, uh, yeah. to make sure you're comfortable as a town in with that language uh, because you want to then get into the position to facilitate a development purpose, let's say. But, I mean, if and I think we can ask DEP the questions, you know, if, if there are some, if we have some anecdotal evidence that there's yeah. some health issues here from people that work there, how does, the, is there any bearing? I mean, how does that ref relate to the environmental? But I mean, have they given you the la uh, language? They gave us a sample from the Bangor plant. Oh, they did? Okay. We don't have we don't our have own, our we'd own. have to draft it. And it's, right. you know, it's pretty stringent. I, I have it somewhere. It's in okay, so you have right a here. template. Yeah. I send it out electronically to everybody. It's it's right here if you want to just take a, make a copy of it even. Um, so this I, is for I, the I Bangor. Mind seeing it, but, uh, I can forward it to you. Right that, that'd be great. I, uh, so it may change because this was when it wasn't part of lead bands, but this is the sample. I asked DEP for a sample from a, something similar and they sent this. So yeah, you're welcome to make it. So copy. that, so that's the. This is, a, no? you know, it may not fit here exactly, but this was for the the plant up in Bangor. And they had to have a survey done and you know, certain things done. I mean, your process would be um, to draft that to your satisfaction, bring that through. I don't think we draft it. DEP drafts it. DEP drafts it. And it gets attached it, um, to their deed. Yeah. So we really, 
Yeah, this is really that's not that's that's between the the DEP and Leadvance. Yeah, because DEP really is saying this is what you can use the site for, right? Okay, based on okay. their all these reports we've got, and yeah. so they're going to set the restrictions. Like, don't you can't use the water. So Leadvance presents that to you. No, we really don't have much to do with that, other than that we can pressure the DEP for things we want. It's nothing. It's not. It's not a covenant with us. It's a covenant between the DEP. And the company. I know, but suppose that I'm sorry, I don't know where, if I'm out of school uh, here, but you're, uh, let's say you want to get control of that property to help to develop it, the town. Right. Okay. Yeah. So what, what, what's your course of action? <laughs> Do you want to take control of Oh, I, I, wow. I haven't even thought about that because that's a. I, I don't necessarily think we want to take yeah. control. Not yet, you but, don't. But if, if why wouldn't you want to? It's a covenant. I'll tell you a story. George Seymour and I went over to Osram to lease some of that space before yeah. the other building was still there. Yeah. They said, "Sure, we'll write up a draft lease agreement for you." They made us responsible for their problem. That's what their attitude was at the time. No, but you've got this. Uh, Fine, but still, I mean, it just they were. It was it was so uh, totally out of reality that they would even think of doing that. That created a real trust problem for me, that their that their law department would act that way toward a couple of local companies that were interested in using that site, that building. No. I will tell you, I don't know enough about how they do it in Maine. If I was in New Jersey, there's a whole. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I hate to say it. I keep bringing up New Jersey. Yeah. I mean, in New Jersey, there's a lot of brownfield sites and there's a lot of money. A lot of free money when you take something like that over to clean it up. Oh yeah. yeah. I don't know how that works in Maine, so yeah. I can't even really speak to that. But you know, in New Jersey, there's a lot of a lot of contamination con contaminated sites. Yeah. Um, the city of Camden actually took over a huge contaminated site, got yeah. a lot of money, and it was basically easy for them because yeah. of the amount of money. I don't. My experience thus far in my eight months here is that the state of Maine doesn't do a lot of free money. Well, it's not a brownfield site either. And it's not a brownfield site that either. Has but that's money the problem. You can apply for yeah. greenfield so, so that to me, you know, I don't know that we'd want to do that because that was actually when I first came here. I think that was one of the questions I asked you. Yep. Was why? Why do we want to take it over? Yep. Um, so that would require a lot more uh, investigation on, on my part. But um, the other thing I want to say about clusters. Um, we had a cluster around Siva Geigy in Tom's River, a childhood cancer cluster. It became very, very nice well known. Yeah. Um, I think there's anecdotal um, from people who work there about certain things. Um, I think that there was, um, based on things I've heard, that there was some investigation done into that. Yeah. Um, so I, I think the person you need to talk to um, is on that list who can inform you more about that. But I just think we need to, um, the solar farm, and it might turn out that it's gonna have to be something you do with Leadvance. Right, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing all of those you know, pieces. Um, that, and, and we have other property too, that you know, if you really wanna work with the town, yeah, um, yeah. we have a pit. I don't, know how, I don't know how good of a site that is, but. Yeah. You know, there's other options that I think you just have to explore at, yeah. okay. all the options yeah. because this is, you know, now that I, I'm sorry I was late, by the way, but, um, you know, if we're getting into all of those health issues and things, then you're right, it does, it does, yeah, it, it, it can right. get, it can get, it, it, it has the potential to get much more um, time consuming and. Yeah. No, well, this is helpful. I, mm -hmm. I just to understand where you all are at. And I, um, th that, that, Goal of getting uh, of Leadvance getting a covenant that's sort of airtight, <laughs> to use whatever expression that might relate to. Um, and it would be interesting to know how many of these they've enforced. Yeah. yeah. But you know the way it would work is, that I don't think Leadvance will put this on unless we say we want to do something with right. this or, or right. be able to lease it or whatever, and and we're ready and can deep. You can nudge them, them in that direction. I mean, but they're not going to do it. it. They're not going to do it. will tell you right now. They're, 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 they'd sell or lease that site right now. Oh, yeah, no, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it has to be a very well crafted. Mm -hmm. um, so, well, may, let me, I got to think about this a little bit and, and take a look at that and talk to some of our uh, folks about uh, how to proceed. The, 
the the best route they I've been advised is the town has some role here because there's a there's a tax issue. There are all kinds of things that you know. Uh, that, Go, but let, let me take a look at this after this uh, meeting and see where we go with that. If I can get a copy of that, be great. I will email it to you. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Or do you want a copy Thank right now? I can go do that. Yeah, I like electronic copy actually. <laughs> Is that okay? Because yeah, I'll, I'll share that. I will even me. make a note so we that should, I remember. Yeah, we need to, we Thank need you a for copy your time. I, well, the, thanks for coming. I, I wish we were farther along because I think Yeah, I, I'm surprised. I thought you guys were. It's been a quagmire because the more we delve, yeah, like the we, more we produce you, yeah. this, I'll just show you this map we made. Yeah, We're that's what I LIDAR, wanted, a map. <laughs> and LIDAR allows you to have one foot contours. Yeah. And you can see where all the wells are. Oh, okay. Do you have another copy of this? Not, we're actually revising it because okay. there's some missing ones. Can but I get there's this major drainage oh here. Boy. And drainage is, and they never put wells along oh. these. So this is okay. where they are putting wells now. Which is the actual site? This is the pad. That's the pad. How many acres? How, how big is the pad? No, we haven't actually, ca I can ask them to add that up. I'm guessing it's, the whole thing is 39, this, so it's probably about four or five. Yeah. So this is about a 40 acre. Roughly at 39. Uh, that's the total size Including of the whole this area. Lot. This is the gray house. The, the gray house, okay. And the culvert, that little stream is right okay. there, right? Uh, Running right down before yeah. that, th that I ran by, or is it right there? I'm not, it's, one, it's right here. But there's a lot of water running down okay. that, I, that I said. But there are a good five acres here. Roughly, that looks yeah. like, I'm guessing, just estimating. Yeah, there are a good eight. five acres, which is the size that we'd need for a one megawatt. Yeah. Uh, I think it's one, one and a half megawatt. Well, when we get this redone, I mean, it's the town, and you can distribute it to whoever you want. But I, we're going to put where the four houses they monitored wells on and some additional wells in the two new locations. Okay, so the question is whether whether this can be the u site right. u uh, utilized with a covenant. Don't worry about the rest of it. With a covenant that um, protects the, the user uh, under some, you know, 50-year uh, lease arrangement from somebody, flood vance or whatever. Yeah. Well, um, Ron, what attracted you to that? What, what, what is your opinion? What, what, what is well, we've, we've been, uh, we've had a renewable energy committee right. uh, of the town, yeah. um, mm -hmm. and we got the landfill installation done, right? Seth is chair of that committee. Uh, there's a lot of talk about solar in the state sure. and nationally, and uh, it just seemed like a, um, you know, uh, slam dunk in the sense right. of, a, of a location that was exposure. Close and to wires. Uh, close to wires and the, uh, the uh, yeah, so well, it's, it's as simple okay. as that. And, and so there's a gang of people in Maine uh, that are developing or working with municipalities or nonprofits or private developers. You know, you can go different ways on this. Um, I thought it might be a place for a much larger installation set, but when in talking to uh, some of the uh, develop, you know, my, my connections here, the uh, there, there could be a problem in who to sell that electricity to. It's not it's not clear. So we th we're thinking of uh, the going the solar farm route, right. uh, which is within the net metering structure. Does it have to stay on the grid all the time? Are you, are you yeah. So well, so it, yeah, yeah. Right. So you yeah. just sell it to. Yeah, because my electric would have gone up horribly, so I'd love to see that. Yeah, I would love to see that. I think people in Walnut would like to. Well, see we that. also thought it would be a good uh, uh, investment, uh, a sign of uh, the town uh, going down this energy renewable energy path, and there are other development things going on. Right, too visible maybe yeah. for some. Yeah, Maybe. but really likelihood of using it for anything else to me seem to me it seems like the the easiest thing you could do on that site with yeah. the whereas. Well, as I've it. learned, there's a lot of NIMBY, yeah, and yeah. you oh, have oh. to realize that's a big yeah, that's a could, big site, yeah. and you're going to see it. You are going to see it. That's that. what you, you want. are going that's to see it. Like to well, do. but but I understand yeah. for you, you want to see it for the yeah. people who live around it or have to look at it. Yeah. Let's well, we'll find out. You'll I find mean, out, we, we can, you know, can, and that's a, that's that a, happen. that's a. You could screen that. Either. I'm not worried about that yeah. as much anyway. as. Uh, so, the, so you see the solar panels from Tree 20? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, right up. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Right. Because of our latitude. Yeah. The solar panels, you wouldn't see them. They would face south and west. Well, yeah. And yeah. you see the backside top edges. I see. You wouldn't okay. see any big brown or blue and black. Right. And you could screen it, too. That's right. 
can but, see from across the river. Right, right. that's what I'm right. talking about. Oh, I see. Yeah. So yeah. the people on the hill. On the other side, they'd rather see. They will say my property value isn't that great now. Oh, or that, I mean, it would be a very small thing from right. two miles away. Uh, well, Interesting. Yeah. Okay. But you would be amazed at what will <coughs> set people. Oh, no. Well, I, I, hear you. I hear you. That seems yeah. solvable to me. But again, the, the piece that I was we interested in, I don't know if this would work, is to, to, to try to uh, draw in mm -hmm. residents as investors. Right. Uh, and once you do that and get multiple investors that way, uh, it gets complex. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you know, you don't have a single investor taking advantage of the tax credit. You have multiple right. ones, and that it gets a little complicated. But um, anyway, that's a that's a thought to, yeah. to work on here. Okay. So, um, okay, well, um, you're sending me that, and I have some work to do. <laughs> and and our, I think after our next meeting with Max, we'll be a little clearer on the remediation thing, at least hopefully get some of our outstanding questions answered. 23rd of March, is that a Friday? Yeah. yeah, so our next meeting, March 23rd at 8.30. I'm going to at some point recommend that we meet maybe every third week at some point if this gets going because I think once a month I know people have things to do, but I, I think there's just so much to digest here. I, I think once a month is just, again, the pace is, our hearts are well intended, but the pl pace is glacial. Although there's so. a lot of homework to do in between. I mean, if we can come up with everything I right. said. Yeah. This, this meeting, we haven't gotten the answer. Okay, I, uh, just an idea. Yeah, I okay. just, just want to throw it, if it gets to the point where there's a lot of moving parts. Well, what I Or maybe we can meet in subcommittees. That's what yeah. I mean. Okay, exactly. So we, um, the work can move along in different okay. facets as quickly as we can get it to. So March 23rd and 18th. Okay, excellent. Okay, so anything else? I think yeah. that's it for the agenda. Okay, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank John. you very much. I love the idea. But, I do. Know, there's issues, I know. Okay, you're next. Yeah. I, this is, this is great. Do you having mind? Yeah. You guys. No, I don't mind. Wonderful. Along me. Uh, Bob Lawrence is on the um, economic like development. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. I, I think I can't like hear that. you. Would you please send yeah. me this example? There's not there's a, also. Because yes. the, from my understanding, I mean these companies. Oh, Bob Lawrence is on the economic development committee, I guess. John.